there. Well, it's a rainy um, evening in Florida, and we've had tropical weather, and the pastures are flooded. My riding ring is okay, but my horse isn't. So I'm just spending a lot of time with uh, Winston, thank goodness, and doing a lot of art. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, last time we talked about how the equisizer looked from the top down and the different gates. Now I want to kind of separate how we look when we ride the equisizer, and specifically I want to start with the lower leg and some things that um, I focus on when I'm riding. When I ride, I try to think of my body in um, three different parts. My leg, my core, which is stacked. We talked about stacking from the center of your body. And then from the core up to my head and shoulders, because you know that when you drop your head, everything goes down, and when you turn your head, everything goes one way or the other. Same thing when you drive. So um, when we work with the lower leg, one of the things that I've been told many times is keep your leg quiet, you know, and you admire riders who have a quiet position and a quiet leg. Um, that takes practice. So I'm going to show you uh, riding Winston, just kind of not thinking myself of myself as in three different parts, but all one big floppy piece. So this is just riding as if I'm all flopping all over the place. And, and doing this, you can actually lose your stirrups because your leg is all over the place and you're swinging around. Okay. Now, let's think of separating the body into three parts again, and we're going to separate the lower leg, standing up, dropping onto my three-point seat, heel, hip, and ear lined up, and I'm going to drape my lower leg gently, on my thigh, gently against the side of the equisizer or your horse, and not squeeze. Squeezing is this which creates tension and it also causes cramps and your horse has been being sent mixed messages. But if you gently just drape your leg and think of your leg as being separate from your core, now I'm going to pick up my, uh, my walk and my trot and have a quiet leg. Focus on a quiet leg. So here is a walk. Walk. Here's a trot, focusing on my quiet leg, gently draped but not squeezing. And here's a canter, quiet leg, gently draped, not squeezing. Now I'm going to drop my stirrups and keep my quiet leg. Now to show you the difference, I'm just going to flop all over the place, all kind of like just. <laughs> it feels terrible. <laughs> And your horse will think it feels terrible too. Back to my quiet leg. Okay, and one of the advantages of having quiet legs is that you can pick up your stirrups very easily. So, quiet leg, not squeezing, not pushing on the stirrups, just gently resting. Drop your stirrups, pick up your stirrups. Quiet leg. Drop your stirrups, pick up your stirrups. That's a good thing to practice. If you have a quiet lower leg, then when you do send a message, your message is clear. If you're flopping all over the place, you're sending all kinds of messages and probably not the one you want to send. So quiet lower leg is helpful for communication, it's helpful for you for safety, it's helpful for balance, it's helpful for focus. It's helpful that you can isolate the different parts of your body so you can focus on what you're doing. When this becomes muscle memory and this becomes strong and you can focus on where you're looking <laughs> and what you need to do through your core and through your lower legs and your head and your shoulders, then everything comes together. It seems like a lot at first, but it becomes muscle memory and eventually all you're thinking about is what you're going to prepare to do next and then do it. Have fun practicing.